at a time and that's because it allows me to build everything off of it now since I'm doing a common style double rage diamond I don't want to get too funky for this one like I, I got pretty funky last video we're gonna to try to stay a little bit less funky this video get you guys some good general tips for this video here we go so we'll put the CC so for the CC here we have two places that's usually gonna be on a diamond double rage diamond base it'll be behind the town hall something like this or it'll be more towards the top of the base here um, I think for this base we're gonna put the CC right around this area and my reasoning for that is we're gonna have the monolith behind the town hall somewhere around here and because root riders are so strong triple ice golem has become the meta CC uh, right now because it can slow down the attacking troops and kind of hold them in high damage areas so my goal for this we're going to have the triple ice golem CC here in the core. Monoliths will be able to shoot the troops as they cross by and also hold them in the middle. So if the attacker um, uses the eternal tome ability on the warden, um, the troops will get stuck in the middle and then they'll have to fight that other rage comp on the back end. That's kind of my idea for this. We'll see how we can implement it. So here we go. So we're going to get our um, walls here on the side of the monolith making sure we make it unreachable from outside these walls here on this side. We also want to have these walls going up next to the town hall to force the Archer Queen or any troops that destroy the town hall to go through the town hall poison to target the monolith. So if you didn't have these walls here next to the town hall, if I destroy the town hall, my troops might walk this way or this way, um, and they might not go into town hall poison. So by making a wall similar to this, then there's some different scenarios that you may have seen this in before um, it forces troops to go into that town hall poison so that's something we always want to take advantage town hall poison is definitely an important thing to try to use to your advantage as a base builder now what do we want to do here because we're going to be using one multi one scatter in each of the rage comps we have another inferno tower to use so we're going to make ourselves a multi compartment here on the front of the town hall um, now there is a debate for a single inferno tower at the moment but I think multis just give you a little bit more advantage. If you're trying to stop a hero Sui, we might want to go for a single. So we'll look, we'll take a look at that in a little bit. But multis help stop against, you know, balloons like Lalo attacks and kind of just helps out a little bit with a little bit with everything. Um one, two. Also, for a non-breakable wall, we're gonna build out 15 walls. So we're gonna make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. There we go. So you got fifteen. And some quick little thing, you don't have to count again. You can just, you know, mirror the walls on the side there and bring it back over. Okay, there we are. So we got kind of our general wall format here for this town hall comp. Um, we're going to make this multi a little bit unreachable from the outside. We'll probably just do something very similar to what we just did, probably around there. Um, and we'll bring these walls out here next to the town hall so that the town hall is not reachable from outside these walls. Now for this town hall comp, I'm gonna go with a little bit of a basic town hall comp. Um, and the reasoning for that is, I don't wanna get too funky. I want this video to be helpful at all, at any ways that it can be. And I think doing some weird approaches to things is not the correct way to learn how to build. Um, so here we go. We're gonna open the corners here of this town hall comp that makes it so that you cannot wall break this wall. Um, one thing that I might do, actually, actually, I'll do it like that. That should be 16 walls. Um, so if you do a 16 wide or 16 walls like this with an angled corner, it's not wall breakable. Uh, we're going to have to give the wall breaker somewhere else to target so that it doesn't target that. But we'll double check real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 16. There we go. Sometimes I like to, you might see some builders do these little overhangs on the walls here, and that's just primarily um, to make things harder to walk in there so you know say I had my wizard a wizard tower here and then I also had like a, a, a building right there and the barbarian king just walking this way destroys this building and there's another one over here I'll keep walking because it has a little bit of a longer path to go around that little corner there you might see some builders try to take advantage of just a little bit of weird pathing to do things like that all right so what do we want to do here? Um, on the other base I showed you, I had the ricochet cannons somewhere around here to the town hall. And I think that's what we will do for this. Now, I think uh, good Rico cannons or multi-arch towers, the combo defenses, 
they're good sources of damage. But they're one of the best things you can use right now at Town Hall 16 for damage wise. And I think Rico Cannons here on a diamond give you some good advantages on this Town Hall comp. The reason for that is if what I will most likely do here, where is it? I will put my Tornado Trap around here. Now, my point for that is the Barbarian King. His gauntlet ability is very strong. Now, if I hold the Tornado Trap here, the King will get stuck on it, stuck in it, excuse me, and these two Ricochet Cannons will be able to shoot him, making it a little bit harder for him to get a ton of value in that Town Hall comp, and you want to try to mitigate his King Gauntlet ability as much as you can. That's a very big problem right now, is not letting up too much value. So, for these other two sides here, we're going to go ahead and put two Expos. Now, the point for this is defending the Flame Flinger. Uh, Expos outrange a Flame Flinger. Um, and if I didn't have these here, or Mortars, or any heroes, someone could place a Flame Flinger on the side of the base and would be able to Flame Flinger this whole compartment, which is just way too much value for that. So, um, we're going to keep going here. I'll place a wall here just to make it uh, like a dead zone here. We'll keep the Expos there, keep the Ricochet Cannons there. For behind the Town Hall, I'm going to be putting... We'll just do some Builder Huts for now. Um, and then we'll probably have our air sweepers some somewhere over here like this, watching those rage compartments. Okay, here's what we're going to do now. We're going to bring our clan castle in. Um, now, either here or here is... I'm pretty sure... That's not chainable, but this is chainable. So, we'll just bring this out here. Like so. Just bring some walls. And we'll bring the walls across here to make sure that this monolith has a little bit of a buffer space or dead zone so that the Archer Queen can't shoot it from on the other side of that wall. Making sure we're going to take use of our corner technique here, building out three tiles from the corner and then angling them off. Once again, reach abilities purely talking about the Archer Queen. There's some other things to take into consideration like um, Super Archer reach ability, but that's not used as much. Um, Okay, what can we do here? We're going to move move this here. Um, this will be a little bit of a compact space up here, or at the bottom here. So we'll have to watch out for troops like E-Dragons getting a lot of chain value on this area. We'll come back to that. Um, here's what we'll do now. What you might see is you'll see your eagle now on the other side of here. And you'll see an eagle compartment up there. But because of a rage compartment, rage compartments typically use a lot of walls. Because you're trying to make things um, like closed off, and you know, you know what I'm trying to say. So we're gonna have to come back to our eagle eagle compartment, and I typically don't give the eagle a lot of love on my bases. Um, I I do typically <laughs> don't use a lot of walls for it because I end up running out, and I'm like, I gotta use them somewhere. I have to put some walls on the eagle compartment. I mean, so let's get started on our rage comps here. Typically, the reason the style of the diamond base has evolved and a lot of them are very similar is because it's more optimal to have your multis more in the core, um, more of the core of the base, and that's good for loons. It's harder for them to path to it. Like, if I had my multis out here and scatters here, that's just, it's very weird. Um, and you do see bases like that, but in my opinion, they're not as strong. Um, and there's kind of a reason why some certain styles have evolved the way they have and have become very common and it's because they are stronger than others and so like a typical typical format here for these multis will be somewhere around here um, did not mean to bring that out there but we're gonna have some type of rage comp going on here um, typically for a rage comp for making a rage comp you want to put as much um, things in the rage comp as you can but not too much because you don't want to get too much zap value and you don't want to get if someone uses like a blizzard or a super archer blimp uh, you don't want those to get an extreme amount of value like if i put every inferno tower and two scatters in a rage comp that's way too much and you also have to keep into account the warden ability tome or the warden tome eternal tome excuse me if you have you know so many defenses here around the thing around the rage tower and uh, attacker uses their eternal tome he'll be able to destroy all of them without them doing any damage to him um, so you have to keep that in mind and try to just balance out your rage comps 
Um, but you still want to use enough to get value out of your rage tower. If I only do like one or two rage buildings, like in the rage, it's not enough value to validate using a rage tower. And in that scenario, I'd probably end up just switching to a poison tower. Um, now I do think rage, double rage bases are good right now for Legends League and in some war scenarios, but for the high, um, higher up-ish ESL right now, it's they're not strong at all because they're typically a lot easier to three star quickly. And bases that have double poison towers are a little bit slower on average attacking wise. So that's why you see almost all double poison right now in esports. But double rage is good for legends, in my opinion, and wars. So let's keep going here. What do we want to do? Okay, so we'll bring those out. We want to try to see what kind of... One thing that I like doing with these rage towers now is if you put your expos and your scatter shots next to each other, um, you can fit them on this side of the rage tower in the rage now i like putting my expos next to my scatters like this because you cannot flame flinger them and i like putting the expos a little bit more towards the center of the base if i can because they have such big range it allows them to get more value if i have them over here you know you're not taking advantage of their big range as much so having them more towards the inside there does help out so let's put our we're gonna start to get our general format down or you know lay out here for our base and just see how we end up here um so far this is looking kind of like a typical double rage diamond base that you would see or might try to build um you kind of have your double rage comps here you have your mono behind the town hall ricochet cannons um multi there we go kind of a typical town hall compartment now one thing we want to keep in mind here is um we do not want to have too much pathing into the monolith. So if I had wizard towers here, that would be a bad choice because any defensive targeting troops are going to target this multi and then they go to the wizard tower and then to the mono. That makes it very strong for root rider spam to go from one side of the base straight through it. You can kind of force where the root riders go to a degree um, by the distance between each of your defenses. So. If I, you know, have a wizard tower here and whatever there, I'm just these are just for show. Um, if anything destroys this, the closest thing next to it is going to be this wizard tower, and then these defenses over here. It will not path into this mono. Um, and the monolith is good at killing root riders because root riders have a lot of HP, and the monolith has a little bit of damage difference based on how much HP a troop has. So you want to take advantage. Of trying to keep the mono a little bit safer i don't think the mono i think the mono is a little bit underwhelming right now and i i think it would i think it would be appropriate to give the mono a good amount a good sorry wow i'm stumbling over my words here i think it would be important to give the mono a good buff um it would make it more relevant and i don't know if anybody remembers to throw back to the beginning of town hall 15 the monolith was super scary and they nerfed it um it was such a just op defense and yeah, it would be really cool to see it back to that original form, but fortunately, I don't think that will ever happen. But, you know, going off that, we, we will be seeing a new monolith level very soon, so I'm excited to see if that will help impact anything. So, we'll, I'll put a wall here for now just to make that a dead zone. And let's keep going here. We have our multi-archer towers, and I'm going to use those probably over here in the eagle compartment. This is kind of shaping up nicely over here. Or wall wise we have a four tile gap here in between the wall and the defense so archer queen cannot reach it from this side um, and let's start going here for the scatter we're gonna build making sure we have room on the side here we'll just start forming out our walls should be good um, yeah when you are building a base if you want to make sure that you have enough space outside your walls i would recommend building them early because say say i only had you know this much amount of space in between my scatter shot and i didn't have enough room to place a building there then you might need to consider uh squishing your base down a little bit to fit it in there but the reason i'm doing this once again is so um the archer queen cannot reach the scatter from outside of this compartment and she is forced to walk inside of there to get it um and i can take advantage of that 
in different ways, such as, um, you know, a uh, attacker might want to whatever, but you guys what I'm trying to say. Archer Queen reachability, big thing. You want to limit how much the attacker can get with their Archer Queen from team. Okay, where shall I put my air sweepers? I kind of think they could go somewhere like there, but they are a little bit spread apart. We could put them here, but that allows defensive pathing, and sometimes I do put them here, but I want to try to avoid that if I can for now. Okay, here's what we're going to do. I will put a little small compartment right here. Wait, that's not smart. Hmm. Okay, let me check. Okay. I guess... I guess we will be putting them right here. For now. It's kind of... They're very wide. You typically... Hmm. You typically will see them, you know, some... Actually, you know what we can do? Hold on. I'm just realizing what I can be doing. Sorry, I'm not even removing these walls very efficiently, but it's okay. I think I've messed this up again. One, two, three. Yeah, I did. Okay. We can do a two tile like that. Um, reason we're having this wall here so that the Inferno Tower cannot be reached from inside the Mono Compartment. And then we'll put the sweepers like here. I like that. I'll probably split them more. Now we do have this central channel here we'll have to worry about, but super archers are not very popular at the moment, thankfully. So I will not worry about that for now. Putting builder huts back. I think it's always good to have at least two builder huts on your town hall. That can help out with things. Um, so, yeah. Let's keep going here. Bomb towers. A couple things we can do for the bomb towers. I like putting them in the eagle compartment sometimes. Uh, just for some more splash damage over there. But you might see them in front of the town hall for either uh, short balloon. Or... Honestly, right now they're just being more used for a DPS role, in my opinion. Um, what I was saying is, sometimes you'll see them in the town hall compartment. And the point of that is, the death damage of a bomb tower kills super archers and super wizards. And you can also put them in specific spots of your base where you want to avoid them landing. But I'm kind of disregarding that right now. Um, don't want to worry about that. So I'm thinking about putting them here next to the multi. And the reason I like putting them next to the multi is if anybody wants to zap the multi and rage tower, um, they're getting the bomb tower. And people do not go out of their way to get a bomb tower with a zap. Um, so giving them, giving it to them for free is fine with me. But if I was able, if I was to put, you know, an expo next to that or a combo defense like the ricochet cannon next to that, um, it would just be a lot of more value. And now you might be saying, oh, well, look, you can zap the scatter shot expo and rage tower. Yeah, I know that, but um, it's less value. Um, a scatter shot is not as valuable as a multi, in my opinion. I think scatter shots are weak in a lot of scenarios than a raged multi. And also because the raged multi is more of a core defense on this base, um, attackers might try to target that instead and use their heroes to get the scatter shots. Whereas zapping a scatter shot expo and the Rage Tower, it will make them a little bit harder. Don't know if that really made sense to you guys. I thought it made sense to me. So, we'll just build out our walls here. Um, seeing what we'll decide to do for this area. Build out from the corner of the multi, just making sure it's not reachable. Kind of got ourselves a funky base here so far. One, build out the corner here. Boom. Reason I'm making this little small compartment there is so the wall breaker will, will not target this. If it hits right here, 
it'll open up the corner okay sorry if anybody places a wall breaker because this compartment is closed here and these are not so if anybody places a super wall breaker over here it'll target to this wall right here and if somehow it manages to go off you know on this tile right here um, it would open up these walls and keep this one the point of that is if I had just had it like this you know open like that into the monolith blow this up it would destroy this and then uh, it would open up the walls into the monolith and the multi so you do want to try to limit how much value a wall breaker can get um, whenever possible I do like to try to do that I do forget about it sometimes so it's okay if you do too I'm just gonna close that in um, I think it just makes it another wall to break and also makes the scatter shot unreachable from this area over here um, we'll bring the wall out from this corner over here just to help work on our scatter shot compartment and we're also going to mirror it on the other side so we're gonna build out from this wall boom 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 I think we had it like so I'm gonna bring this wall here what do we do on that side yeah we hit the bomb tower right there um I think I will put an air hero with the multi on this base and you might have seen that a lot but I think that's more typical um, it helps stop things like you know an RC getting the multi she'll have to fight a defensive hero and also just puts the RC it just puts a hero in there making it a little bit harder f to get that so I think I'm just gonna you know occupy that whole no we'll probably put the air hero something like that now this base, every base has its flaws, and I would say on a diamond base, its flaws, what would a diamond base main, what would the main flaws be on a base like this? Um, you would have to watch out for getting too much value with zaps, so I'm trying to limit that if I can. You'd have to watch out for Sarch. Um, Sarch could be a problem on a base like this. If an attacker was able to land a super archer blimp somewhere around here and it would survive um, it would could get this whole area um, now luckily we do have a bomb tower here and an air sweeper it was a bit, little bit harder to do that now let's you know make sure we add at least some walls to the eagle compartment eagle, eagle compartments typically yeah like I said they don't get as much love as the rest of the base in my opinion but we will try to see what we can do okay we're gonna build that out like that I think we should do something like this now hmm we still have you see where we have all this space up here we're not using I can do something like that and then we're going to be able to bring these walls out one. Like that. Now we are running out of walls. Which is the main problem from a diamond base in my opinion. Hmm. What do I want to do here? Something like this maybe could be nice for this scatter compartment. I'll remove these walls here from now from the eagle because I think I'm going to need them and then we will also bring out this wall here now the reason I did that is this kind of small dead zone or this you know empty space here makes it very hard for a hero to walk in there and I think I can actually remove that wall and it would still be fine there I think that'll be okay now what would this do let's think about it the archer queen could walk in here and if the archer queen is here this you have to fight the cc so one thing you can do is try to draw the okay yeah that makes sense if a person's queen walks in here she would target this 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 and this but there's nothing here she would target okay so if i bring the air sweeper actually you know what i can do 
Actually, that's a bad idea. I was gonna put a Tesla around here. Uh, if I put another builder hut like so, why don't I just do that? Or, <clears throat> hmm, what do I think about that? The reason I'm doing that, I'm giving something to the Archer Queen to target. Because she'll step up in this gap and she'll get targeted by the air heroes as well as the monolith and CC and that could be a very precarious spot to get her stuck in because she's getting shot by two ground bows so we can try to maybe force people's archer queens to go to that little channel just to kill them that might be kind of nice to try to do put an, a builder hut there hmm We could put a builder hut here, but I don't like doing that. When I have those little dead zones like that, little gaps, I don't like putting buildings in there because it makes them targetable by wall breakers and it just adds defensive pathing into the core more, like in through this direction. That's one of the reasons why I don't like doing it. Okay, yeah, so we still have this rage tower. We have a few things we could put in there. What can we put in there? Now, it could be kind of cool to do, like, a raged air defense. That might be kind of fun. Sometimes it's fun just to, you know, add more rage defenses than you would normally. We might be able to actually put a raged air defense. It's kind of funny, actually. Raged air defense, new new base building meta. Um, actually, what I might do, something like that. And then... No. Hmm. That could be good. Maybe not. I think the scatter comp is getting a little bit too big for my liking. And be that can make the the, the the an attacking barbarian king would destroy this entire compartment and would get a lot of value. And that's what I'm worried about. Um. We'll put a storage there just for more HP um, I guess we can just do a raged wizard tower there's not really anything else that I could put in there we could put the warden altar actually a little sneaky sneaky warden altar in there and a wizard tower I like that put the warden on the RC side and then we could put a Tesla farm in there too For the, I guess, we don't necessarily need to take advantage of that extra rage space, do we? One. Yeah, we did need an extra wall there. I didn't even... There we are. Maybe that wall might make sense there. I'm just thinking about wall breakers right now. If someone placed a wall breaker over here, it could target here and here, and you'd have access to this compartment very easily, which could pose some problems for. Hmm, we could do something like that. No, that's not good. Why don't we? <laughs> Rage air defense, guys. <laughs> Ooh, you know what we could do? Put the other builder hut in there. A little rage builder hut action. I like it. Yeah, we'll do that. And then we'll just put a little wall in the corner there. Now, what else can we do? It's kind of like a general layout here. Um. One thing we can do is add some wall. We can make a compartment like right there, honestly. We'll steal little walls from here. And I'll put that like so. And then, I think I'm onto something here. Remove this here. Put the wall there. 
And then we have another compartment here in front of our multi. And we our eagle compartment is open. Um, let's work with this and see what we can do. I kind of like having that raged air defense there. It might actually be kind of fun. Uh, we'll put the, the king in the um, eagle compartment. Um, and we're also going to place a mortar and our multi-mortar. The reasons for the multi-mortar and the king um, is defending the flame flamethlinger. The, the king is a hero, obviously, so it'll, you know, hit the flame flamethlinger and it will not get shot by the flame flamethlinger because it's a hero. And then you also have mortars here to help support the eagle from that. Um, we'll also add some storages in there just for some more HP buildings, making it harder or just take a little bit longer for that. For these corners now what do we want to do here uh, we have two air defenses so we'll place them here uh, one thing you do want to think about sometimes is um, your lava hound pathing right here it would go right over the town hall um, so it might be smart to bring these a little bit more in because if you have you know red bombs or air traps behind the town hall here any lava hound that crosses the path will pull that so you can kind of force that pathing with your air defenses. So maybe we'll do something like that. Put a little gold storage there for another ricochet cannon. So it takes more. And then we have, yeah, there we go. That'll be nice. Okay. Uh, we don't want to get direct pathing onto the scatter shot. So we're going to put some defenses outside the walls. So we'll put an archer tower here and here and then we'll also put one here and here so that it's symmetrical typically diamond bases are very symmetrical your other two mortars can go they can go either up here with the eagle but I will put them also here in front of this compartment just for a little bit more flame flinger action optionally what you can do is switch these um, but the problem with that is the queen can get both of them if she charges in front. I do like splitting them up a little bit. Um, so if the archer queen comes in here, uh, what was I saying? If she comes in here, she can't shoot both of them and they can both be shooting her. Um, and they have a lot of damage. That's what made sense to me. All right. Because we kind of have this little weird channel in here. We want to try to make it hard for the Archer Queen to walk in from in front of the Town Hall in this spot. So one technique we can employ for this is we'll put some gold storage in front of the multi just for more damage. But we'll put some Teslas right here next to the air defenses. And the reason for that is if the Archer Queen is here, right? She just shoots this, shoots this, shoots this. She walks up to shoot this. It'll pull this Tesla, activate this, and then it, she'll walk to this, and then this will be closer than this over here, and she'll walk to that and keep walking this direction. Um, you can use Teslas to kind of force queen pathing sometimes, but if some attacker does do a good funnel on that, um, they can funnel her in. You know, obviously everything is subject to who is attacking. If the attacker makes a mistake, or if they have a good plan, or if they're just a really amazing player, there's not really th anything you could do sometimes because they're just you know smart enough to out out do out outperform the base or I don't know what the right way to say that would be but they're smart enough to do better than the base builder I guess. Also, you want to try to limit your target ability of these air defenses from the outside. So I will put these wizard tower here, wizard towers here. Typically, I do not like putting wizard towers outside the base. Um, it, but they do have a lot of HP for defenses. And I just think they kind of fit up here. Um, we'll have our other two wizard towers over here. Also, one tip that has been given to me in the past that I have used is you don't want to have wizard towers or scatter shots cross over the top of the air defenses. And the reason for that is they're a splash defense and they can target the lava hounds that are by the air defense and not target the balloons. I think in this scenario, it is okay because we need them kind of in this general area as a um, another defense over here. We also have this multi here. Um, 
Now, this last wizard tower and cannon, we'll put them up here, probably. No. Wizard tower's over here. Cannon's gonna go up here somewhere. Probably there. Put the dark storage up there. And then we have two cannons left. Now, actually, we'll put the cannon directly... Excuse me. We'll put the cannon directly in front of that, and then we'll move these wizard towers over here. Now, we kind of got a nice defensive spread here. Let's get ready to do our fill. So, you do want to take up as much of the base as you can. Uh, we'll just... Um, I would recommend to anybody who's a new builder to not think too much into where they put all the extra buildings that are not defenses or traps. But, if you are looking for more intermediate to advanced ideas towards this type of thing, one tip I'll give to you... Um, is mix up wait what is yeah mix up the type of buildings you place down so like here's a resource building and a regular trash building and you can get this with sneaky goblins and you can't get you can't get this one with sneaky goblins so they can't use just sneaky goblins to get things i think that's one tip that is pretty useful we're going to slide this over here put another thing there another tip you can do is um, depending on how close you put trash buildings to one another or extra buildings or just buildings in general um, you can kind of force where things go based on how close so if you're trying to target specifically how the barbarian king can path um, he would go here 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 and then into this stuff but if you wanted him to go to a certain direction you could kind of you know space things out more or put things more closer together like, if I wanted him to go this way, you could put him really close. Yeah, I. It's fun to, fun to play with that kind of stuff sometimes, and I'd recommend, you know, using that in some scenarios. But we're kind of employing that with these Teslas here with the Queen. Um, so we'll just see how that goes. I'll put these army camps on the corners. Uh, space this a little bit this way so that we have room. Right, we'll just put it like that. I'm just doing two tile gaps right now in between the buildings just to give it more space here. And we'll be able to fill that gap. It's kind of a nice touch. Hmm, what did I... There we are, symmetrical now. Then we have Archer Tower there. Building there building there. No. We have two buildings over there. We'll put this all the way out like so, and then we'll put... I guess we'll just do a couple of buildings there just to fill the space in. What do we have left? Do we have anything? Yeah, okay, we have this scatter comps. So we'll do elixir collectors like so. Just to fill that space in for now. And then we'll just do the space up here just to fill this in. Not thinking too hardly about it right now. Now we have three Teslas and all of our traps left. So what do we want to do for this? We want to place all of our traps down. I'm sorry. I'm just thinking, I'm thinking to myself really quick. What do we want to do? I think I will just do a small Tesla farm over here in this scatter compartment with these extra Teslas. And you can use those few key things you can use Tesla for. Tesla's for extra damage in a certain area, um, blocking certain defenses so that they have to get targeted first, and also messing up pathing, which is what we're trying to do. That's our goal with these ones. Now you can always move those. Um, we'll just do two skeleton traps in here, and I'll just do a giant bomb and some bombs in there for now. Because I got those extra Teslas in there, I'm going to put those skeleton traps there. Now, I don't know where my... Oh, it's right there. I'm going to put the other two skeleton traps... Actually, I'll put... Yeah, I'll just put them... I'm going to put them on the... No. It... Hmm. Actually, you know what we could do? We could put them right here. Hmm. 
I'll put I'll just put them right now on the sides of the town hall. That'll just help against heroes. Um, and then now we have our seeking air mines. I will place. I like them here actually. The reason I like them this close is I don't have any defenses in front of here. And unless you place something like straight right here, like a balloon, every, most of them are gonna target these these mortars here on the sides. So you can kind of force, if you're doing like a queen charge, the healers, um, it's kind of a little bit harder to pull these two. And then, always like having some of these on the back side over here, just for some shorter blimps. We'll just put them there for now, like so. And then we will have, we could do another one in here. Could do one like there. As well no I think it's a little bit of a waste um, we'll do one here just for healers or general mm, I guess we can put it like there actually kind of be a good spot um, kind of off to the side of the sweeper if someone does like a side angle blimp and just you know I, my recommendation is you don't want to think too hard about things, but you also do want to try to put things down with a purpose. So I think you got to find a good balance with that type of thing. Put some giant bombs there for some, da for some extra damage, as well as, you know, just some bombs here. I'm, since I'm not trying to defend super archers right now, I'm not going to use my trap specifically for that, but I will do a little bit. Like, I will put... I will put some spring traps here. And I will... Yes, I need some more bombs up here. Just for some more damage in this area. This is going to be very... Actually, we're going to need a skeleton trap up there. We're going to steal... That one. And we're going to put it right there. That's just probably to help a little bit with the RC. Because we have these multi-archer tower so those can try to help kill the spirit fox on the rc making it a little bit harder to get that eagle compartment but we got two mm. for now i'm just gonna do this with all the red bombs behind the town hall i think this is a def a good default spot you can place them um balloon clone and balloon blimps are common we do see them sometimes so those red bombs can help mess that up sometimes Actually, you know what we could do? Because we have the NATO here. We could do it... Nah, we'll just put them all behind the town hall. I think that's a good default spot. If you don't have anything better to place them at, just put them behind the town hall like that. And then we also have our two Seeking Air Mines left. Um, I think what I'll do, actually, is I'll just put one up here at the point. And then I will spread these just slightly, and then I'll put one other one right there. Okay, now let's check out our base. What do we think at it? First glances, anything that I notice that I think should be changed. Um, now this is a good introductory build to this type of style, and I don't think it looks that bad, per se. Um... I don't see any major flaws out of the first things that I see, but this is a little bit shorter of a video so far. Hmm. All right. I think that's actually going to be it for me. Now, if you made it this far, I really appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, let me know down in the comments any other things that you would like to know, any styles, any you know, anything you want to know. Put it down in the comments or any any recommendations to me please put it in the description or sorry please put it in the comments down below now this base link should be in the description of this video um if you'd like to try it out yourself um but you know that's going to be it for me today guys and we'll hopefully have some more videos coming to you soon thank you guys